Hey guys this is Eric from Invensys Learning, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. In this tutorial session, we are going to learn about Scaled Agile Framework. Before we get started, let us quickly go through the agenda. As you can see on the screen, we will begin with a brief introduction to Agile methodology. Next, we will discuss the need for scaling Agile in different frameworks that are available to scale Agile. Then we will get started with the main topic, which is Scaled Agile Framework, or SAFE. We will begin with the values and principles SAFE is based on. Moving on, we will talk about different configuration levels in SAFE in detail. In here, we will cover important topics like Agile Release Train, Value Streams and others. We will conclude this session by discussing the pros and cons of Scaled Agile Framework, and if SAFE is the right choice for you. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. Agile has taken the world by storm and the prevalence of Agile methods in the software industry today is obvious. Not just the software industry, but it is being applied across all industry sectors leading to Agile engineering, Agile human resources, and Agile marketing organizations, among others. When implemented correctly, Agile offers a lot of advantages such as higher productivity, better quality, faster time to market, great morale, and much more. Here are some interesting practical results of applying Agile that you might find fascinating. It is a common fact, that advanced military systems are some of the most expensive and complex research, design, and manufacturing challenges in the world. Yet, the Gripen fighter jet is the world's most cost-effective military aircraft. It was developed in carefully. Coordinated, three-week iterations by using the Scrum framework to organize thousands of engineers into hundreds of teams. Here's another one. I am sure you have heard of Netflix. Streaming services experience such high success compared to our previous viewing options. But why? During show production, Netflix relies on agile principles such as fast feedback, iterative changes via deep data analytics, and cross-collaboration. As a result, Netflix originals have a 35% higher success rate than other TV shows. For anyone who isn't familiar with agile, here's a short review. According to the Agile Alliance, agile is a mindset, a philosophy informed by the values contained in the Agile Manifesto and the 12 principles behind the Agile Manifesto. These values and principles together provide guidance on how to create and respond to changes, and deal with uncertainty with ease. So when you think of Agile as a mindset, that can be applied to other activities as well, not just project management or software development. Unlike the waterfall model, Agile methodology emphasizes iterative development, or building software in pieces. By that I mean, you break down complex projects into small manageable goals. You are working towards these goals while adding new goals based on the requirements and customer feedback. They do this by breaking up the traditionally long delivery cycle into shorter periods, called sprints or iterations. The iterations provide the cadence for delivering a working product to customers, get their feedback, and make changes accordingly. Each of these iterations is a project in miniature, it has a backlog, or what you know as a requirement doc, and consists of design, implementation, testing, and deployment stages within the predefined scope of work. At the end of each sprint, a potentially shippable product increment is delivered. Thus, with every iteration new features are added to the product, which results in gradual project growth. Usually, Agile software development consists of small, self-organizing teams of software developers and business representatives regularly meeting in person throughout the software development life cycle. However, despite the importance of agility today, many organizations struggle to reap the full benefits of the Agile approach. To keep with the ever-changing market demands, the leaders who have experience working with Agile teams are asking some compelling questions, such as How to scale Agile to the enterprise level? What if an organization were to launch hundreds, or even thousands of Agile teams? How to handle the culture shift, that scaling Agile brings to avoid failure of Agile transformation? Would scaling up Agile improve corporate performance as much as Agile methods improve individual team performance? This is where scaling Agile comes into picture. But what exactly is Agile at scale? It's simple. As you know, the simplest form of Agile product development is at the team level. Scaling Agile is nothing but applying the practices, values, principles, and mindsets of Lean Agile beyond teams. By that, I mean at the program level, portfolio level, and beyond IT itself. Scaling Agile has two dimensions, horizontal and vertical. Vertical scaling is simply several independent Agile teams jointly planning, developing, integrating, testing, and deploying a product based on an integrated product vision. In simple terms, it is integrating the work of multiple teams into a single product. Now, let us talk about horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling is all about, 
How do we take the concepts of agility into different segments of the organization, so that all of them can make their other processes agile, and be on the same page as to how they are approaching business issues? Focusing on both dimensions enables organizations to achieve success. Well, all this seems great. Over the past few years, a large number of organizations are applying Agile at scale. What could be the possible reasons? What benefits does scaling Agile offer to enterprises? Let's explore that, shall we? Firstly, it offers enterprise-wide visibility and strategic alignment. Scaling Agile across an organization makes it easy for the teams to work together to deliver strategic objectives. With greater visibility organizations can respond faster and pivot as needed. Secondly, it guarantees heightened productivity, scaling Agile throughout entire organizations brings all of your departments under the same task management system. This, in turn, will create a transparent workflow, where workers know who's accountable for what actions. When people know what their responsibility is, there's less downtime between tasks. Thirdly, promotions improve decision-making, Agile's focus on autonomy enables team members to make task-based decisions. This basically reduces the need for managers to micromanage projects, and empowers the team members to make more work-related decisions. Lastly, it facilitates quarterly or program increment, PI, planning, quarterly planning, which is also known as program increment, PI, planning, creates an opportunity for teams of teams, arts, to build project and product plans. Through such meetings, people from multiple departments can coordinate, and they will have clear visibility into quarterly deliverables. There are many benefits to scaling Agile, both tangible and intangible. As you can see, scaling Agile across your organization is an excellent way to boost productivity and drive innovation. Now the question is how is it done? And of course scaling is no piece of cake. It involves a lot of things like predicting delivery, managing cross-team dependencies, and focusing on the right business objectives. To make scaling easier, there are a lot of frameworks available including Scaled Agile Framework, Safe, large-scale Scrum, LaSS, Nexus, and Disciplined Agile, DA, among others. In today's session, we are going to focus on Scaled Agile Framework, or SAFE. Let's begin with what is SAFE. SAFE, or Scaled Agile Framework is the world's leading framework for scaling Agile across the enterprise. So, in simple terms, Scaled Agile Framework is a set of organization and workflow patterns that enables you to apply lean, agile and scrum practices at large enterprises. Dean Leffingwell and Drew Jamilo released SAFE in 2011 to help organizations design better systems and software that better meet customers' changing needs. SAFE is designed to help businesses continuously and more efficiently deliver value on a regular and predictable schedule. Moreover, it provides a knowledge base of proven, integrated principles and practices to support enterprise agility. Also, you guys should know that the latest version of Scaled Agile Framework is SAFE 5. So, there is a lot that businesses can gain by implementing SAFE. Some of the business benefits reported by SAFE users are accelerated productivity, time to market, quality employee engagement, and more. SAFE was formed around four primary bodies of knowledge, Agile Software Development, Lean Product Development, Systems Thinking, and DevOps. In fact, the main purpose of SAFE was to develop guidance for enterprises to apply lean and agile principles and practices in their organizations. Let us learn about the core values and the principles SAFE is based on. Core values, the SAFE core values demonstrate the behavior and action for everyone who participates in the SAFE portfolio. They describe the culture that leadership needs to foster to effectively use the framework. The first value is alignment. Misaligned companies can develop serious problems. Without proper alignment, they don't respond well to the changes that crop up. Therefore, alignment is needed for the companies to keep pace with the fast changes, for the geographically distributed teams to understand the current state of the business, the goals, and how everyone should move together to achieve those goals. However, you should remember that alignment does not imply or command top-down command or control. The next value is built in quality. Safe stresses on the fact that agility should never come at the cost of quality. Also, quality is not something that is added later. The organization should make sure that each and every part of the solution reflects the quality standards. According to SAFE, there are five key dimensions of built-in quality, flow, architecture and design quality, code quality, system quality, and release quality. The third value is transparency. Developing solutions is not a piece of cake, and things may go wrong and not as planned. Therefore, openness is important. To ensure openness, trust is the key. SAFE encourages trust-building behavior, including planning work in smaller batch sizes so problems can be surfaced and solved sooner. The last value is program execution. Program execution is the heart of SAFE. 
Because nothing else matters if teams can't execute and continuously deliver value. Teams and programs must be able to deliver quality working software and business value on a regular basis. So, these are the four core principles that organizations should keep in mind to successfully scale lean agile development. Apart from these four values, SAFE also talks about 10 principles required to build enterprise class software. Let me walk you through these principles quickly. The first principle is take an economic view. It means that everyday decisions must be made in a proper economic context. Every person in the leadership chain, from executives, to managers, and knowledge workers, must recognize the economic impact of their choices. The second principle is, apply systems thinking. To address the challenges in the workplace you need to have a clear understanding of the systems within which workers and users operate. Everyone in the organization must understand the big picture of the system, which includes the system under development, as well as to the organization that builds the system. The third principle says, assume variability, preserve options. Variability is inevitable and unavoidable. So, by assuming it will crop up, and preserving options, you'll be able to remain flexible and in control. The fourth principle is pretty straightforward. It says, build incrementally with fast and integrated learning cycles. The fifth principle states that, base milestones on objective evaluation of working systems. Which means, safe build software in increments, Every milestone contains requirements, designs, testing, and so on. Therefore, every milestone is an increment of value. The sixth principle goes something like this, visualize and limit work in progress, reduce batch sizes, and manage queue lengths. It means, your goal should always be achieving a continuous state of flow, moving new systems from idea to sales as quickly and smoothly as possible. To achieve that you need to visualize and limit work in progress. The seventh principle is very simple. It says, apply cadence, synchronize with cross-domain planning. Cadence helps developers focus on managing the variable part of solution development. Whereas, synchronization helps you understand and integrate multiple solutions to find the best one. The eighth principle is, unlock the intrinsic motivation of knowledge workers. Again the purpose is simple here. Lean Agile leaders propose that rather than encouraging individual incentive compensation, providing autonomy and purpose, minimizing constraints, Creating an environment of mutual influence, and better understanding the role of compensation are keys to higher levels of employee engagement. The ninth principle is decentralized decision making. Decentralized decision making has a lot of benefits and is necessary for achieving fast value delivery. However, some decisions justify centralized decision making. Since both types of decisions occur, creating a reliable decision making framework is critical. The last principle says organize around value. The meaning is pretty straightforward you need to arrange every piece of work around value. So, folks, these are the 10 principles that the SAFE framework is based on. But you should remember that not every SAFE recommended practice will apply equally in every circumstance. Overall, SAFE provides a structured approach to scaling Agile. There are four configurations in SAFE to accommodate various levels of scale, essential SAFE, large solution SAFE, portfolio SAFE, and full SAFE. Let us now explore these four configurations in detail. The first level is Essential Safe. It is the most basic configuration of the framework and contains the minimal set of roles, events, and artifacts needed to successfully scale Agile. The first thing that you should know is, Agile Release Train is the heart of Essential Safe. But, what exactly is Agile Release Train? Let me explain that first. Agile Release Train, or Agile Release Train, is simply a term for a long-lived group of Agile teams. They work along with other stakeholders and incrementally plan, commit, develop, and deploy one or more solutions that deliver benefit to the end user. An agile release train typically consists of 50 to 125 people and is fully cross-functional. There are 5 to 12 agile teams in each agile release train. It has people with different capabilities such as software, hardware, firmware, and others, that are required to deliver fully working and tested business solutions. The main aim of the agile release train is to deliver a continuous flow of value, with a minimum of overhead. You should know that, Agile teams power the train. Each Agile team has 5 to 11 individuals covering all the roles necessary to build a quality increment of value every iteration. Individual teams have a choice of Agile practices, based primarily on Scrum, XP and Kanban to deliver the product. As you might already know, each Agile team has two specialty roles, the Scrum Master and the Product Owner. To know more about these roles, please refer to the What is Scrum video on our YouTube channel. In addition to Agile teams, there are multiple other roles that ensure the success of the Agile release train. And of course, Agile teams within the Agile release train are themselves cross-functional. Let's take a look at them. 
The first person that we have is the release train engineer or RTE. The release train engineer is a servant leader and coach for the agile release train. The RTE's major responsibilities are to facilitate the agile release train events and processes, and assist the teams in any name possible for delivering value. They communicate with stakeholders, escalate impediments, help manage risk, and drive relentless improvement. The next role that we have is product management. Product management is responsible for defining and supporting the building of a product as defined by the vision, roadmap, and new features in the program backlog. To do this, they collaborate with a wide range of people to identify and define customer needs, develop program vision, roadmap, and features required to meet these needs. They work with customers, product managers, product owners, agile release trains, and suppliers to understand and communicate their needs. Next up we have a system architect or engineer. A system architect is an individual or team who is responsible for defining and communicating the overall architecture of the system for an agile release train. They make sure that the system is being developed as intended. They play a very important role in aligning teams on agile release train to a shared technical direction, so that everyone is on the same page. A system architect analyzes technical trade-offs, determines the primary components and subsystems, identifies the interfaces, and collaboration with them. Next up we have business owners. They are key stakeholders of the Agile release train and have ultimate responsibility for the business outcomes of the train. They play a huge role in helping the Agile release train and delivering value. Lastly, we have customers. They are the ultimate buyers or you can say beneficiaries of the solution. In addition to these critical roles, the other roles that play essential roles in the Agile release train are. We have system teams. They typically assist in building and maintaining development, continuous integration, and test environments. Then we have shared services, who are specialists. For example, data security, information architects, database administrators, that are necessary for the success of an agile release train but cannot be dedicated to a specific train. That's about the agile release train. Before we talk about any level, there are certain key terms that you should be aware of. Obviously, to develop a product the team will use different kinds of artifacts. In SAFE, there is a four-tier hierarchy of artifacts which outlines functional system behavior, epic, capability, feature, and story. In Agile, epic is a large series of work that can be broken down into smaller, more targeted tasks. They are basically a container for higher-level solution development initiatives. In SAFE, you have different kinds of epics at different levels. We shall discuss them when we learn about each level. Next, we have capabilities. They are used to describe higher-level solution behavior. Capabilities are sized and split into multiple features for implementation. A feature is a chunk of functionality that delivers business value and a service that fulfills stakeholders' need. Features are further broken down into stories. A story is a short description of a small piece of desired functionality that is written in the user's language. Stories are primary artifacts used to define system behavior in Agile. Let me explain these concepts with the help of an example. A capability can be something like this, perform one end-to-end delivery request. This particular capability can be sized and broken down into multiple features such as navigate vehicle for delivery request, create a delivery request, and many others like you see on the screen. Next up, these features are sized and split in such a way that they can be delivered by a single agile release train in a program increment. They are split into stories, which can be worked upon by agile teams within an iteration. For example, I can split one of the features that we discussed earlier into a story, as shown on the screen. I believe you already know what a user story is. It is an informal explanation of a software feature written, from the perspective of the end user. Enabler story might be a new term for you people. At times you might need additional information, or architecture to implement some user stories. In such cases, you can use enabler stories. I hope this is clear enough. Now let's go back to the essential safe level. Like I said earlier, essential safe provides a starting point for implementing safe. Let us try to get an overall picture of this level by taking a look at the roles, artifacts, and events involved. First, there is something called Program Increment, or PI. It is a time box during which an Agile release train delivers incremental value in the form of tested and working software. The time box is typically 8 to 12 weeks. The most common pattern is four development iterations followed by one innovation and planning iteration. I will tell you what that is a little bit later. When it comes to PI execution for a single Agile release train, To keep the train on track, a sequence of events creates a closed-loop system. By that I mean, there are different sets of events that take place throughout the duration of a program increment. You will learn about each of these events as we progress further. Each PI begins with an event called Program Increment Planning. 
It is basically a cadence-based, face-to-face event where the business context and the vision is presented to all the Agile teams in the Agile release train. Pi planning is facilitated by RTE or release train engineer, who is a servant leader and the chief scrum master for the train. This meeting is attended by business owners, product management, Agile teams, system and solution architects or engineers, the system team, and many other stakeholders. A successful PI planning will deliver two primary outputs, committed PI objectives and a program board highlighting the new feature delivery dates, relevant milestones, and feature dependencies. The program increment planning is followed by team planning breakouts. This is where Agile teams come into the picture. Each Agile team has a group of 5 to 12 individuals with cross-functional capabilities, who define, build, test, and deliver an increment of value in a short time box. Every Agile team also has a product owner and a scrum master. The product owner is an individual responsible for defining stories and prioritizing team backlog. Scrum master is a servant leader and Agile team coach. He or she helps the team to remove impediments, facilitates team events and fosters an environment for high-performing teams. Just like how there is program increment for every Agile release train, every Agile team has an iteration. An iteration is a standard, fixed-length time box, where Agile teams deliver incremental value in the form of tested and working software. The recommended duration of the time box is two weeks. Every iteration begins with an iteration planning event, where the teams discuss the iteration goals, and how much of a team backlog they can complete during an iteration. The next team event is iteration execution, where the team develops an increment of high quality. Increment execution is followed by iteration review, in which the team reviews the previous increments results and adjusts the team backlog based on feedback. After iteration review, iteration retrospective takes place. In this event, the Agile team reviewed its practices and identified ways to improve. Apart from these four events, another event called backlog refinement takes place once or twice during every iteration. As the name suggests, in this event, the entire team refines reviews and estimates the items in the team backlog. At the end of the iteration, the Agile team delivers a high-quality, working, and tested piece of software. Now, all that we discussed here happens at Agile team level. In similar fashion, every Agile team of the Agile release train works on their team backlog and delivers a high-quality, working piece of feature. You should remember that all teams on the train are synchronized to the same pie length, typically 8 to 12 weeks, and have common iteration starting end end dates and duration. Once all the teams are ready with their features, an event called System Demo is organized. The System Demo occurs at the end of every iteration. It provides an integrated, comprehensive view of the new features delivered by the Agile release train over the past iteration. This event provides an integrated view of new features from the most recent iteration delivered by all the teams in the Agile release train. This event basically gives Agile release train stakeholders an objective measure of current, system-level progress within the program increment. At the end of each pie, the Agile release train holds a final PI system demo that shows all the features developed over the last program increment. The next event that happens is inspect and adapt. The inspect and adapt is a significant event, which is held at the end of each program increment. All Agile release train stakeholders participate along with the Agile teams attend this event. So, what exactly happens here? In this event, the current state of the solution is demonstrated and evaluated by the train. Through this meeting, the teams can reflect and identify if they can make any improvements to the backlog items. So, in simple terms, the end result is a set of improved backlog items that go into the program backlog for the next program increment planning event. By doing so, every Agile release train improves every program increment. Apart from the program increment planning, system demo, inspect and adapt, there are other events that take place during a program increment. Have you heard of the term Scrum of Scrums? Well, that's one of the events. Scrum of Scrums is facilitated by release train engineer typically every week. So, RTE, representatives from each Agile team, which is often the Scrum Master, and others meet to review their progress toward milestones and program increment objectives, and dependencies among the teams. This event is time-boxed for 30 to 60 minutes and is followed by a meet after if someone wants to discuss more. Simpler to Scrum of Scrums, we have another event called Product Owner Sync. It is held for product owners and product management. Product owner sync may be either facilitated by the RTE or product manager, and the meeting is time-boxed for about 30 to 60 minutes. The purpose of this meeting is to get visibility into how well the Agile release train is progressing toward meeting the program increment objectives. The product people also discuss problems or opportunities with feature development. At times, both Scrum of Scrums and Product Owner Sync are combined into a single event, and that event is called Agile Release Train Sync. Moving on, 
If you remember in the beginning I mentioned that the most common pattern for a program increment is four development iterations, followed by one innovation and planning, IP iteration. We just learn about development iteration. But what is innovation and planning iteration? This iteration occurs after every program increment and actually serves multiple purposes. It basically acts as an estimating buffer for meeting program increment objectives. It provides dedicated time for innovation, continuing education, program increment planning, and other events. So, that's the enterprise level. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the enterprise level contains the minimal set of roles, events, and artifacts required to deliver value through Agile Release Train. The next level that we have is a large solution level. Large solution safe provides is meant for building large-scale solutions that are beyond the scope of a single Agile Release Train to develop. And of course, building these solutions requires additional roles, artifacts, events, and coordination. Obviously enterprise safe is a part of it. But the thing is, large solution safe allows for coordination and synchronization across multiple programs, but without the portfolio considerations. In earlier versions of safe, this level was referred to as value stream level. Well, with that said let us explore this level. The first thing that you should know is, what exactly is a solution? Solutions are products, services, or systems delivered to the customer, whether internal or external to the enterprise. The aim of SAFE is to develop an effective solution that is fit for its intended purpose, that is desirable, viable, feasible, and sustainable. Great! At this level, we have something called a solution train. This solution train coordinates the efforts of multiple agile release trains and suppliers to deliver large and complex solutions. When I say complex, it can be medical devices, automobiles, commercial aircraft, banking systems, jet fighters, and satellite systems. In simple terms, Multiple Agile Release Trains power the solution train. This solution train literally aligns multiple Agile Release Trains with a shared business and technology mission. It does so by using the solution vision, backlog and roadmap, and an aligned program increment. Now, let us explore some principles and constructs based on which the solution train operates. Firstly, the solution train has a fixed cadence. By that I mean, all Agile Release Trains on the solution train depart the station on a known, reliable schedule. If a capability misses a train, it can catch the next one. Secondly, there should be a new solution increment for every program increment. By that I mean, at the end of the program increment, the solution train delivers a fully integrated solution increment. Obviously, all the program increments are time-boxed. All agile release trains on the solution train use the same program increment duration and iteration start or end dates. These are just a few features, the rest you can check on the Scaled Agile website. Let us begin with artifacts used in this level. The first one that we have is capabilities. A capability is a higher level solution behavior that typically spans multiple agile release trains. They are sized and split into multiple features. Then there is a solution backlog. Solution backlog is the holding area for upcoming capabilities and enablers, each of which can span multiple agile release trains. Apart from that, we have solution epics, non-functional requirements, and enablers capabilities. Now, let us talk about the roles involved. One of the unique roles that we have in this level is supplier. Suppliers are an internal or external organization that develops and delivers components, subsystems, or services, which help solution trains deliver solutions to customers. Safe Enterprise treats them as long-term business partners. Apart from this, we have other roles such as solution train engineer, solution architect, solution management. These are very similar to the ones we discussed at the enterprise level. Just that here the picture is big, I mean they all are responsible for working on a solution or multiple. Then there are shared services, who are just special roles necessary for the success of the Agile release train. Now, let's move on to the events. First, we have pre- and post-program increment planning. These events are used to prepare for, and also follow up after program increment planning for Agile release trains and suppliers in a solution train. Then there is a solution demo, which is similar to a system demo. The solution demo shows the results of all the development efforts from multiple Agile release trains. Then there is inspect and adapt. Inspect and adapt is a significant event where the current state of the integrated solution across all Agile release trains is demonstrated and evaluated. There are also other events such as solution train sync and architect sync. So, that's the large solution level. At the team level, we have systems and at this level we have solutions. Now moving on to the next level, which is portfolio level. The portfolio configuration, which includes essential safe, is the smallest configuration that can be used to achieve business agility. 
This level mainly deals with strategic direction, investment funding, and lean governance. You will understand what that is as we move forward. So, the first thing that you should know is the value stream. Value streams are the sequence of activities needed to convert a business hypothesis into a digitally enabled solution. Basically, it contains all the activities, people, systems, and the flow of information and material necessary to deliver value. The reason to organize around value streams is simple. They improve workflow and accelerate time to market. Systems and software developers, product managers, engineers, scientists, and IT practitioners all work in development value streams. That is where they define, build, and deploy the solutions their customers consume. Value streams also provide the funding mechanism in the safe enterprise. A safe portfolio aligns strategy to execution via a collection of multiple development value streams. By that what I mean is that, every value stream provides one or more solutions the enterprise needs to accomplish its business mission. That's the main point about portfolio level. I suggest that you guys read more about value streams. Now let's talk about the people, artifacts, and events for this level. Obviously, these things are in addition to the ones we discussed in Essential Safe. Let's begin with the artifacts. We have a portfolio backlog. It's the highest level backlog in Safe. It has epics that are required to create a portfolio solution set. You have guardrails, describe the portfolio's policies and practices for budgeting, spending, and governance. You can also use lean budgeting for fast and empowered decision making. Then we have portfolio vision, which is a description of the future state of a portfolio's value streams and solutions. Just like in the previous stages, you have business and enabler epics. Business epics capture and reflect the new business capabilities that can only be provided through cooperation among value streams. Then there is portfolio canvas, which provides critical inputs to the portfolio vision, portfolio backlog, and lean budgets. Apart from these, There are many other artifacts that are used in this stage. You can refer to the safe documentation to learn more. So, let's move on to the people and the events of this level. The important people that you will come across at this level are Lean Portfolio Management, Epic Owners, and an Enterprise Architect. Lean Portfolio Management or LPM represents the individuals, with the highest level of decision-making and financial accountability for a safe portfolio. The EPIC owners take responsibility for coordinating portfolio EPICs through the portfolio Kanban system. Lastly, enterprise architects work across value streams and agile release trains to help provide the strategic technical direction that can optimize portfolio outcomes. Slide 58. Moving on to the events, we have Portfolio Sync. The Portfolio Sync provides visibility into how well the portfolio is progressing toward meeting its objectives. The topics that are discussed during this event are EPIC implementation, the status of program increments, dependencies, and impediments. There is also a strategic portfolio review meeting, which is focused on achieving and advancing the portfolio vision. It's usually held on a quarterly cadence, at least one month before the next program increment planning. The portfolio sync that we discussed before is usually held monthly, and in a given month it may be replaced with the strategic portfolio review event. Lastly, We have a safe participatory budgeting event during which a group of stakeholders decide how to invest the portfolio budget across solutions and epics. Also, you should know that the budgets are typically adjusted twice annually using participatory budgeting. So, that's the portfolio level. To summarize, it aligns strategy with execution and organizes solution development around the flow of value through one or more value streams. The last level is full safe. Full safe represents the most comprehensive configuration. It supports building large, integrated solutions that typically require hundreds of people or more to develop and maintain. It combines all three levels, essential safe, large solution safe, and portfolio safe like you can see on the screen. Well, I am sure that was a lot of information to grasp. Let me summarize it for you. We began with enterprise safe. Agile release trains form the basis for enterprise safe level. You have multiple agile teams working together to deliver incremental value in the form of tested and working software, at the end of program increment. Then we have a large solution level meant for building large-scale solutions that are beyond the scope of a single agile release train to develop. Previously, this was known as value stream level. This level has enterprise safe and other additional roles required to deliver complex working solutions. Then there is the portfolio level. This level includes essential safe, is the smallest configuration that can be used to achieve business agility. It aligns strategy with execution and organizes solution development around the flow of value through one or more value streams. Lastly, we have full safe, which includes all these levels, essential safe, portfolio safe, and large solution safe. So, 
I hope you have understood the overall gist of the scaled agile framework. Great. So, what are the advantages of using this safe framework? Why should organizations aiming for enterprise agility go for the safe framework? Transparency, scaled agile framework gives a complete picture of software development breaking down the traditional silos of development, QA, operations and facilitates cross-functional communication. A simple extension of agile practices. SAFE has safely extended the agile model to the portfolio and program level. Again, SAFE did not use any new techniques but codified existing elements including user stories, features, and epic hierarchy. This means SAFE can be adopted even by a naive team and there is no additional training required. It is a lightweight framework. You do not have to master the concepts of this framework. It is lightweight in the sense, the graphics presented on the home page will direct the user to a web page. It contains the definition, concept, reference links, and all details. Therefore learning becomes mastering within no time. Offers constant upgrades. The safe version gets continuous upgrades not to change the basics but to include evolution on a yearly basis. As I mentioned in the beginning the current version is 5.0. Another benefit of safe is to help teams maintain alignment with business goals. Often, the alignment can get lost in agile environments that take more of a bottom-up approach. Developers and testers lose sight of the big picture. In contrast, SAFE's top-down alignment and centralized decision-making helps ensure strategic objectives remain top of mind, and that all decisions get made in support of those objectives. Also, SAFE can easily handle a coordinated strategy for large-scale and complex projects with teams that number into the hundreds. That's because the Scaled Agile framework was designed to maintain a big picture of software development, and has its roots in Agile and Lean principles. And Dependency Management Many teams which are pretty agile struggle with dependency and risk management as there is no inherent way of resolving them in a regular agile framework. SAFE has an excellent way of ensuring the teams recognize the dependencies, during program increment planning to discuss and negotiate them, visualize them and plan for them. Sponsor and business stakeholder engagement. A lot of the agile teams do very well in developing the product but they may not be developing the right thing. On the other hand, SAFE has a robust way of engaging business stakeholders on a regular basis with the teams. This has the advantage of better ensuring the right product is developed, reduces risk, and provides better buy-in to the commitments the team provides. Of course, SAFE has its fair share of drawbacks as well. For example, many teams find that SAFE takes too much of a top-down approach. As we discussed, it provides additional layers of oversight, administration and coordination. Though that's the best point about SAFE, Ironically they make it resemble the waterfall approach that many teams are trying to leave behind. The primary disadvantage of using a scaled agile framework is that it becomes overly complicated and burdensome to keep up with. The fact that SAFE emphasizes the big picture can often lead to longer planning cycles, and more fixed roles within development cycles. These two points go against the idea of delivering in short sprints to get new software to market faster. The simple fact is that, scaled agile framework for enterprise isn't for everyone. Now that we've taken a look at the concepts behind SAFE, the advantages for its use, and the criticisms of its implementation, let us take a look and see if this approach is right for you. Scaled Agile Framework might be right for you if The scope of your project is large. Traditional Lean and Agile frameworks are mostly associated with single development teams that are working on a focused deliverable. What happens when the scope of the project grows beyond? You might need additional roles and layers of accountability. If you're working with multiple teams in your project management, SAFE may be the approach you're looking for. You need to manage complex dependencies between teams. When multiple teams are running their own way of agile implementation but regularly facing obstacles, delays, and failures, SAFE is the best choice. Keep track of what lots of team members are working on. SAFE works with a built-in organization chart. This is invaluable when working with teams that can exceed 100 development staff. Scaled Agile Framework for Enterprise has integrated tracking so that there is a clear definition of what each time member is working on at any given moment. Stakeholders to be kept in the loop about the activity of teams. The Scaled Agile Framework has built-in mechanisms to collaborate between stakeholders and the teams. This built-in collaboration between the two organizational levels is not something that is common to traditional Lean and Agile frameworks. If you feel your project needs some top-down control mechanisms, the Scaled Agile Framework for Enterprise may just be the ticket. With that said, let us now look at the scenarios when implementing SAFE is not recommended. First, when you are working with a relatively small team avoid going for a scaled Agile framework. This is the most obvious reason to avoid SAFE. If you don't have a reason to scale up your Lean and Agile process, don't complicate it. You are looking for a cure to organizational and structural change. 
SAFE can scale up your lean and agile processes but it won't change the structure of an organization. If one of the teams that is a part of the project is not suited for a specific task, SAFE won't be able to change their makeup or even mask that deficiency. You have leadership that isn't bought into the process. SAFE is a complicated and new process for any project manager. If leadership is not bought into learning how to manage this framework, SAFE is likely to fail and, frankly, complicate matters to a great extent. There are a myriad of factors that go into deciding if a scaled agile framework is right for your organization. However, if you are in need of a large-scale, multi-team management framework, SAFE may be just what your organization needs. So, that's about it guys. I hope you have understood all the concepts. Please do let us know if you have any doubts or comments in the comment section below. Like I mentioned earlier, Scaled Agile Incorporated is the certifying body of the Scaled Agile Framework and leading provider of SAFE courses. It provides a variety of role-based courses and certifications that can uplift your career to the next level. I am sure you might be wondering how getting a SAFE certification might help you, right? First of all, Scaled Agile Framework has become a framework of choice for scaling Agile, making the value of an individual holding a SAFE certification greater than ever before. Secondly, with approximately 70% of U.S. Fortune 100 companies implementing SAFE, the demand for SAFE certified professionals is growing at an exponential rate. SAFE certifications open up a new door of opportunities for career development and growth. They demonstrate your ability and willingness to work within a SAFE environment. Also, enterprises are hiring SAFE certified professionals that onboard faster and understand the SAFE environment more quickly compared to non-certified counterparts. If you are looking forward to getting a SAFE certification, we can help. At Invensys Learning, we provide live online certification training for SAFE courses such as, SAFE Agile Certification Training, SAFE Scrum Master Training, SAFE for Teams Training, and SAFE for Government Training. The certification training for all these courses is in line with their guidelines. Post-enrollment you will get lifetime access to a personalized learning management system. LMS has all the class recordings, live class, webinar links along with assignments and case studies to practice. All classes are live instructor-led delivered by trainers with rich domain experience. Enroll now with Invensys Learning to learn from the best in the industry and become a certified SAFE professional today. Thank you guys. See you in the next session.